Hello everyone, it is me, the accordion coverist in Xanity's Finest, and welcome to today's stream where I got a good one for you. So, everybody knows the Sonic movie. Yeah, that. This, this thing here that you see, you know what this is about. You've heard stuff about it. I hope everyone has been having a good day. Everything seems to be nice, bright, and sunny. Okay, maybe not. You know what I mean. Who cares? I'm rambling on. But with this, I went and saw it with a few friends. You may know them. You may not. doesn't matter. That part doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if I had a good time. It doesn't matter anything at all. It doesn't matter. Get it? Okay, I'm, I'm still rambling on. Apologies, apologies, apologies. So, so that I'm not distracted by the music, I'm just having a nice background. <clears throat> Whenever this movie was first originally announced, I was highly skeptical. Like, it, it didn't seem like it was going to be something I'd be interested in. Because... Let's, let's, let's get a couple things straight here. Video games turned into movies usually does not work out very well. I think a perfect example of that, well, to be honest, any sort of media, but um, I think the... Um, damn, people talking in my background. The, the prime example for that would be Super Mario Bros. Anyway, but I think the prime example for that would be, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> yeah, the Super Mario Bros. film for many, many obvious reasons of not working with any of the actual source material other than the fact that they were, they had their names, there was, a uh, person called King Koopa and the fact that Mario and Luigi were plumbers. That's about all they really did with their source material. This, however, this movie right here. You know what? This is throwing me off. Let me let me do this thing here. We're gonna uh, oh, no. We're gonna Bam! Now I I try to adjust for it, and I still. Uh, yes. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I'm glad the rambling on. I didn't have any of this prepared because I'm a dumbo. But this movie, this, this movie here, is not like that at all. It was a pleasurable experience. I do not regret the money that I spent on it, and. To be honest, I was going to go see it anyway, no matter how it was, because if we all remember the original design... <laughs> yeah, no. I I was just going to go because I knew it was going to be bad. It's like, if this is the design that they're going with, I'm going to hate everything about this movie. And not even Jim Carrey might have been able to fix that. But... But then a couple of months after hearing everybody's cries of despair, and like, oh no, it's gonna be bad, this movie's gonna bomb, it's gonna suck, and all that sort of stuff. I was pleasantly surprised when Paramount actually listened to what the fans wanted. And, I mean, hell, I think it was a, even Sega themselves, it was like, yeah, we don't like what you did here because of a couple things, blah, blah, blah. We'd appreciate if you had changed that up. Because the idea was they wanted to go with something a bit more realistic, and to be honest, you're not going to get anything really realistic when it comes to, you know, Sonic. Because for. I mean, hell, look. Look, look. At, look at the damn picture. It, it, 
they're, they're still using the fur texture, which is an odd choice. I mean, they used him to take a picture and worked out all right. I mean, it is what it is, but this this redesign here, it looks gorgeous. It really does. Uh, for it to be a uh, live action film, it, it is honestly really surprising. And uh, we got, what's his face? Uh, man, I, hold on here. I need to pull up some information here so I can be correct and not mess anything up. Get all wiki. Pull you on over. Over here, so I can read you off from the side here. So, I suppose the best way to explain this is read it exactly as it says. Sonic the Hedgehog 2020 adventure comedy film based on the game franchise published by Sega, etc. Film directed by Jeff Fowler. Apparently, from what I hear, Jeff Fowler is the director that I don't know what all he was involved in exactly but he did work on Deadpool 2 I believe so there are definitely scenes within this movie that you can definitely tell for sure that uh yeah it, it got some inspiration some relative not inspiration but uh some relatively similar scenes I suppose effects things of that nature within the film itself I'll get to that in a little bit um Screenplay by Pat Casey and Josh Miller. No idea who they are because I don't know many things. <laughs> Stars Ben Schwartz as the voice of Sonic and Jim Carrey as Dr. Robotnik, or as everyone likes to know and call him, Eggman. So, got that. Got James Martson, who I assume is the uh, 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 other guy who helps out Sonic who was also in the Curious, not Curious case, uh, the uh, P Peter Rabbit, or whatever movie it was, and like, like I saw people compare the scene where he's driving the truck, and then it shows the exact same kind of scene, whatever, I'm, I'm, I'm rambling, so it has that, a bunch of other people, but nobody, nobody really cares at this point. We only care about the two main characters here, Sonic and Eggman, or whatever they are. Yes, all the other actors are interesting, they're there, they're having a blast, yada yada, they drive a little bit of the story, but what we want to see, what we want to see here is some good old Sonic action. They, uh, hey guys, how you doing? Warport Luna. Welcome to the stream. Anyway, um, as I was saying, I went, went and saw the Sonic movie. It was a blast. It genuinely was a blast. If you don't want to be spoiled about this movie, I suggest leaving and coming back or whatever for a little bit. Because I'm going to be talking about this for a few minutes. Um, if, if I were to give this a movie a rating, out of let's say 10 stars I give this a solid 9 I, 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 I can never give it a full 10 because obviously there there's the the biggest issue I had with the film at least back whenever the trailers first started and I haven't seen any of the trailers uh, since uh, the the redesign was introduced like I someone showed me the picture of what the actual current Sonic would look like and I was like oh man that's amazing I love it and from there I was like this might actually be a good movie so I'm gonna hold off on seeing the trailers because if I look at the trailers I'm gonna know what's gonna pop up in the movie things like that I, I, I prefer not looking at the trailers I want to go in with a free bias hey pair thanks thanks for tuning in um, <laughs> but with that, there are some problems with it. The main one being some of the music. They literally have the whole sound Sonic soundtrack to really work with, and from what I could tell, 
they only used one thing that was anything relatively close to what could have been, you know, from the actual game, and that was a piano version of Green Hill, and it's only just just a little bit of boop, do 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 do, just that little beginning part, and I mean, I really I really enjoyed it. It, it was a blast, but I, was, I wish they could have used a bit more, you know, of the actual music selection because they have an entire library of things they could have worked with and I feel like they could have done that but with the way that things ended with the movie there's definitely room for a sequel I could see a second one coming out anytime and with the way that they ended the movie I'm, I was honestly sold uh, along with that Jim Carrey, wonderful actor I've seen him in so many different films The Mask Cable Guy oh, what else is there the the Batman Forever movie uh, him as Riddler he, he is always an energetic and entertaining actor he has been a front man of my comedical knowledge with uh, when it comes to you know doing silly faces and saying the most obtuse things you just never know what's going to happen with him and he really really sold the character in this movie he he may not look the part of that man Robotnik whatever you want to call him but he definitely fits the personality we got him dancing we got him being the intelligent know-it-all that he is loves robots <laughs> and we don't really see much of it, but at least not until the, it's, it's like, if, if I had to explain it, and granted these aren't entirely my own words, if I had to explain it, it's, it's we see the transformation of Robotnik into what we know him as today as Eggman. We see him slowly get a bit more perturbed trying to capture Sonic in order to understand his power and all that junk. So, the way that it's being done, it is really well executed. There, there are a few scenes here and there that I'm like, eh, could have been done a little differently. It could have been a bit better. Like, I think there's, like, it's, it's literally just an entire scene devoted to uh, Robotnik. And it just starts out with the camera being upside down. And that this is a very big problem I had with it, mainly... Probably because I was up close uh, with all the people that I was sitting with, we decided to have to sit in the front row seat because we had really nowhere else to sit. It, it wasn't completely full, but it would always, I think there were six of us, six or seven of us, and uh, trying to fit that many people all next to each other reasonably at, you know, where all the main seats are wasn't going to happen, so we literally sat in the very front row. But... I honestly was fine being up that close. I, I'm used to having a lot of screens up close to my face, so I could see a lot of what was going on. But uh, that scene in particular, what happens is it starts out upside down, you know, just hanging upside down, then it just slowly turns until it's finally upright, and then it starts spinning around him. And it's just so disorienting. Like, if, if, you, if you think virtual reality is disorienting sometimes, that entire scene right there with the camera is just like stop it stop it right now I don't like what you're doing I need you to stop I need you to stop but with that I I have very little to complain about to be honest because it, it like it to me it felt like a relatively basic story because you got these real life humans he's he's found out because he's a if, if I have to give a little story synopsis here, it starts out with him. We we get the stereotypical movie, start from the end, and then we'll rewind and show you what was all happening beforehand. That has been done time and time again, and it seems to work because it. I mean, it worked okay. It's like. It's just decently done, I suppose. So there's not much I can really say about that because it was expected, if I was going to be really honest. Um, ben Schwartz. 
whenever I first heard his voice, I was like, I don't know who this guy is. I don't know what he's doing. I don't like the voice. I, I, I just automatically was like, no, I don't like the way this sounds. It, it is not Sonic to me. But as time came closer to the movie and I started hearing more about Ben and some of the things he's been in, I was like, you know, this, this might actually work out. This, this may be pretty all right. Um, and a lot, a lot of the dialogue and, like, interactions between him and the characters, or even with himself, uh, it, it did feel like Sonic for most of the movie. There's definitely a few things here and there. It's like, really? You can do that? Like, he flossed twice in the movie the first one i was like mm, i mean it's okay you know I, I don't know how to floss it, it it is not a thing that i do but it was like okay i get it the whole point of him is being you know like if, if you go back to sonic heroes and read the uh man manual book it'll say that sonic is 15 i can see that with with him being a teenager you know stereotypical teenager and whatnot they do whatever they do yeah, flossing is so cringy. <laughs> and it's just like, you could have done better dance moves. I mean, I know what I do cringy is the Macarena. A lot of people say that's cringe. A lot of my coworkers hate me for it, but I, I it's something I do daily. I en genuinely enjoy doing the Macarena. It's super simple. But everybody's like, ah, that, that's stupid. That's lame. Come on, you, you got better dance moves than that. And I'm just like, let me just be me, and this in this case, I'm willing to let it slide. With how well the movie has done, there's honestly very little for me to really try and nitpick. There, there was definitely a little bit because of all my friends' uh, enthusiasm. Uh, I was like, okay, you're making me not want to be enthusiastic about this movie. Like there were times where I genuinely laughed and uh, was amazed by it, but right now it's just like. Tone it down a little bit. I know you're excited, but you're making my enthusiasm go out the window. Because if I I hate being part of a bandwagon, almost any form of it, unless it's something that I start or I was like relatively close to starting it, because it's just like, eh. <laughs> oh yeah, do it with me, brother. Hey. <laughs> Oh man, <laughs> I wish I had a better camera so that it doesn't like. Uh, oh whoa, it, it's all blurry. My bad. I'll I'll have to get a webcam or something. I'm getting off topic. Uh, but it 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 was wonderfully executed. Um, it is it is a very generic story, but it it gives a good demonstration. One of the bigger nitpicks that I have is Baby Sonic. Or at least what they consider to be baby Sonic. And this, this is just from other stuff that I've seen. We're getting a lot of these baby things. Again. Like, if, if you remember Baby Tunes, which is... Or, you know... I suppose that's what it was called. I can't remember exactly what it's called. But it's like the baby versions of Looney Tunes. Everybody loved that stuff. They, they were real excited. And it's like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And then people started following that trend. It's like, oh, yeah, you know, everybody's going to join these baby things. Why not? And recently we saw that with what is supposed to be Yoda in The Mandalorian. I haven't watched that series yet. I've only seen, like, one or two episodes of it. I'm not a big Star Wars person. But everybody's like, oh, look, it's so cute. It's so adorable. I love it. And it's just like, it only... It only last for as long as it's gonna be lasting and then with the the way that the younger sonic looks it's odd really odd it like it does look like a miniature sonic but it's got too much baby face and it's just like i don't like it i, I just don't like the way it looks um going on from there i like the fact that they from what it looks like from my personal expect perspective uh whenever the young Sonic was being attacked, it looked like, to be honest, echidnas. Looked like they, they, they looked like they had little quills 
or whatever it was that the Echidnas have, you know, basically more of Knuckles' race. And I really thought that was interesting. Like, well, that that means that they could potentially introduce other characters and all that junk in the uh, next film because honestly, I feel like they're gonna make another one. They they just have to at this point. Um, go from there. I like the effect, the the uh, idea of what the rings do gives them a purpose other than just you know protecting one's life like it does in the game, or or at least from the classic game. Uh, I, for, I forget where it came from. Um, uh, like, it, it was a, an idea from another, like, one of the actual games or from something. I can't remember what it was. Uh, let me see here. Yeah, the Super Warp Ring. Uh, let me look here. I think this is what it's... Yeah, the Super Warp Ring, which was introduced uh, looking at the uh, Sonic Fandom page here. It is a normal Warp Ring charged with Chaos Emery energy from the Master Emerald. It doesn't look... Wait, then what's a Warp Ring? Da, 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 da. Okay, so it appears in the comic series. No, 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 no. The warp ring. That's right. It's 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 that war. The warp ring is from um, literally the first game, uh, which leads you to the uh, special stages in order to collect what is now known as Chaos Emeralds. And like in the very first game, I can't I can't believe that that didn't make sense. <laughs> that that didn't connect to me but uh it was also used it's been used in the games it's been used in uh the comics made by archie and uh so i, I thought bringing that from like a, an official thing i suppose uh used like they they really worked with the source material here unlike so many other video game movies or anime movies dragon ball evolution um they, it seems like they genuinely tried and try and from like the way that it looks makes me want to believe that the original design for Sonic was there as a media grabber because if it automatically looked good and everything it was like okay yeah we're, we're just gonna casually go see it but they they launch with that really crappy ugly rendition of Sonic and everybody was paying attention to it. It grabbed their attention. They were, ex they were like, I wouldn't say excited, probably excited to uh, rant about it. But they, they, almost everybody genuinely hated it. At least a very vast majority, myself included, because it didn't look anything like Sonic. The animations for him, uh, uh meow. Uh, you know, just it just looked bad. It looked genuinely bad, and then the redesign came out, and alas, the day was saved. It, it it is a clever marketing technique. I feel like it's it's cheap. Well, maybe not cheap, cheap, but you, it's cheap to be done. But it works, and you gotta do what you gotta do in order to grab somebody's attention nowadays. So. I commend I commend Paramount and whoever else worked on it. I, I know Sega didn't have a lot of involvement on it. It was like, yeah, you do your thing. You're just using our assets, etc. But um, I, w I was genuinely impressed. Um, I know a lot of what Robotnik said like within the film there there was definitely moments in there it's like yeah that this definitely feels like Eggman it was enjoyable uh and with that I I, I just love his, his interactions a lot of what he said it's, it it just felt really well made and that that's 
That's why I gotta give it at least a nine. A, a nine. I, I can't. With with the small nitpicks here and there, they they really do bother me to a point. Mainly that beginning bit. But aside from that, I genuinely enjoyed it. And by the way, if uh, I'll I'll give you guys a few moments. If you don't want to hear this in title a spoiler you know the scene that popped up after the end of the credits and you just want to find out if you haven't seen the movie yourself I'll give you a few moments to uh, scoot down out or mute or whatever you want to do what's playing But uh, the reason why I said they're, they're set up for a sequel is because, as, as Marvel used to do with their movies, probably still do, with the after credit scene, scene, it starts out with another warp ring appearing. And at first it's like, oh, what's this? Is it going to be Eggman or something? Did he find a way back? Because we see him. And, and it's like, okay, maybe na maybe not Eggman was my first thought. I honestly don't know what was going to happen. It just started out with the trees and nice blue, did I just say blue? Nice green, luscious forestry. And uh, it was just like, okay, what's happening here? And then the warp ring appears. And guess who comes out? None other than our good box mechanic miles per hour tails that's right and not only that we even get to hear him talk and the voice that they used wh whoever did Tails' voice for just that small segment sounded exactly like tails it genuinely did and it looks so beautiful like Everybody made a joke all the time. It's like, oh yeah, Tails is gonna be in the film, uh, and then showed a picture of a uh, what is it, Mr. Fox from uh, the Fantastic Fox, whatever that animated movie was. I never watched it, and, uh, and I was like, yeah, that's funny, but I didn't see Tails being in this movie. And then, bam, out of nowhere, it's just like, <laughs> and it made sense because if you think about it. With with the this first movie, it tend, I wouldn't say it's an origin story, but it kind of is, and it's, it lays out a because like like if you think about it, the first game only has Sonic, the second game has Sonic and Tails, so it makes sense to introduce Tails right at the very end here. Now, what I'm curious is, will they explain how he got there? I don't know, but I am genuinely excited to see what will happen from here. So, with that, good old 9 out of 10, 4.5 stars, big oh 90 slaps across the booty out of 100 of how good that movie was. And... I, I really wanted to see it again, to be honest. I was half tempted to stay and <laughs> watch the 9, nine o'clock showing, but I was like, nah, nah, I need to save my money. <laughs> like, the, the tickets weren't expensive at all. It was just more of the recessionary things. But with that, that was my nice little review over Sonic. I might upload that somewhere or do something with that. I don't know. But, uh, now we're going to trans...